Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. We're going to talk heat today. Today is the first day of spring, and we all in Hawaii can feel that spring heat coming on. And guess what heat does in Hawaii? It comes through windows, and we get uncomfortable. A large part of the job of those of us in the energy field is to get that heat rejected so it doesn't come in the window. That has two very good effects. The occupants of the home or building are much more comfortable and they don't need to reject the heat as much in the form of air conditioning. Air conditioning is a very big energy consumer and those of us in the energy office don't like very big energy consumers. So we do all we can to keep homes and buildings naturally comfortable, which brings me to my distinguished guest, Andrew Sabaras, president of and CEO of Cornerstone Energy Solutions. Greeting and welcome to the program, Andy. Thanks for having me, Howard. Yeah. Very happy to be here today. And Andy, is a, I've heard him speak many times and he's a super, super techie guy. Do you have your PhD from Princeton in physics, was it? or I not, don't not have quite. my PhD at all, but oh, I okay. live on campus at Princeton University. Ah, okay, because when, when he speaks, when, when he's doing a real techie type presentation, it sound, sound, that's what you sound like. I've, I've hung out with them long enough, I guess. Yeah, you get, get that by uh, osmosis. And we're going to talk about Huber Optic Glazing and Huber Optic is a German product, top of the top of the line, I, I would say, without prejudice. And I'm sure you are totally unprejudiced when you say, uh, when you agree with me. And we're going to talk about the difference between high performance glazing or glass that contains metal and doesn't contain metal and the effects thereof. So why don't we launch, or would you like to say any opening remarks before we launch into slides, or? You know, uh, we have a video to share with, uh, oh. Oh, um, video, as well, yeah. and I would love to share the video to get started. The one thing that's real important to understand is that I've spent my life and my passion in green mm -hmm. and sustainability. Uh, the one product okay. we had mentioned, the uh, Huber Optic, is the, is the top of the chain as far as window films are concerned today. Uh, but as a Cornerstone is an independent consultant, and uh, my colleagues Rich Goldberg uh, and I, uh, we have the ability to select any product that we feel is best for mm -hmm, the consumer, mm -hmm. whether and whoever that is. There's certain climates where I like different products, uh, but for Hawaii, uh, the choice is very clear. Mm -hmm, uh, as mm -hmm. clear as I believe the Huber Optic window film to be, mm -hmm, uh, the choice mm -hmm. is very clear. But if we could start the video, I think that would help us greatly. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we'll we'll start the uh, the video first, and here here she blows. Yep. Yeah. So why don't you uh, explain us through this uh, video, Andy? Because we're we're not going to get uh, we're not going to get the audio. Okay. Yeah. So hopefully you get the uh, the credits across the bottom there, the closed captioning. But what's happening is is they're talking about from the early days uh, where ceramics have been utilized, whether it had been in. Uh, pottery and such like that to make them more sustainable and longer lasting. But now it's our components inside of where we are. Engine blocks mm. by uh, Mercedes-Benz are mm. being tested uh, that won't require the same need of uh, antifreeze or coolant because what's happening is that they're able to dissipate the energy. Uh, our space shuttle, for one of the most uh, obvious examples, uh, is coated with ceramic tiles. It hits 2300 degrees Fahrenheit on re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere but its ability to have a rapid, uh, if not a, its immediate, rapid if not immediate dissipation of the energy is what keeps the people inside the craft safe. So as opposed to a metal, when a metal heats up, it has a tendency to move. Metals cause different problems with friction. And in our glazing world, what happens with metals today is metals will cause thermal stress if they heat too much. Uh, right now they're talking on the video about its use in the space program as well as weaponry uh, in the um, dental field. Uh, ceramics are utilized now uh, for uh, teeth replacement, tooth replacement, as well as bone and hip replacement. They're using ceramics because they find our body adapts with more. It's explaining what a titanium nitride type product is and how the sputtering process um, occurs through this. 
And titanium was named after God. <laughs> and, there, and there he was. Yeah. So yeah. essentially in the sputtering process and what they're explaining here is that we take a metal type product uh, and it goes into a cathode and through the process where an argon, uh, argon filled chamber uh, the negative ions are what attaches to the substrate. Uh, therefore, uh, when they do attach, you have a titanium nitride product. We have to insert nitrogen to the end of it, which is where you get your titanium nitrogen. And actually, as if on cue, we put a video of it on there. So on the bottom, we have the cathode. And as you start to charge, uh, what happens and what we're seeing there is the window films, the titanium particle goes up, and then they're going to uh, add the nitrogen to it. So it is a fully metal and dye-free technology. By being metal and dye-free, you're never going to have a corrosion, a color change, and we're able to build a stronger construction that, again, would rival glass. In the past, I think it was safe to say that you know glass was very permanent. You'd see 80-year-old glass. We see it every day here in Hawaii, but you put a tint on it, and the tint would tend to turn purple or the metal tints are now we're finding corroding. We thought maybe 10, 15 years ago, we had some great metal tint, but what happens is tint in a saltwater environment, the metals corrode. And some fantastic uh, reports have come out that said anything within 75 miles of a coastline, the metals are corrosive. Right now, what we're seeing is it's explaining that the ceramics have four times the performance, 12 times the comfort. We have these on slides coming up, and. Uh, we'll talk about those a little bit more one-on-one -on -one as we as we hit them. Well, actually, we don't have slides, it turns out. Oh, no, we don't have slides. We don't well, have Well, you slides. have them in front of you, I, I so if you front, turn so the page we'll, in front we'll, of me, we'll be uh, yeah. able to, we can go through those, and uh, which is okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I, I will lead us through Absolutely. the slides, and then you can uh, fill in here. So we've, we've been through the nanotechnology versus the metal technology, and we'll get into a lot of uh, detail there. But the, as you said, the same product that's going into these windows is going into hip replacements Correct. and into the space shuttle. We're talking some very, very high performance material here. The IR uh, rejection capabilities of ceramics are what was originally put onto the stealth bomber. bomber. Mm -hmm. As you think about radar, the stealth was able to name itself is to be undetectable by radar because mm -hmm. radar mm -hmm. is infrared. So if you coated mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. coated ceramic onto the stealth bomber, uh, it rejected the infrared away, which made radar I invisible by radar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, which brings us to the fact that you just now sent me some uh, studies from the NAHB, National Association home Building, of home builders. Or home builders, and some of the metal-based window film that reflects off the, the heat and gets to its neighbors is actually melting vinyl siding on the neighboring window films. We've seen uh, reports yeah. recently where not only is it melting siding, but it, and by the way, and it's a fair assumption, it's some of the metallized coating of tint. And there is a huge differentiation between tint and films today. Mm -hmm. But what happens is when the sun is hitting the metal, it's reflecting away as Archimedes so uh, appropriately tried to teach us years ago. and We uh, all choose to ignore concavity. Uh, what happens is that the metals, when the sun's reflecting, has the opportunity to reflect over 200 degrees uh, back against surfaces. Uh, in North Carolina, just a few weeks back, they had uh, on very good international news coverage where uh, a home caught fire. It's home catching fire, it's wooden sheds and wooden fences, uh, some pretty interesting reports on what happens when the sun is hitting it. Here in Hawaii, I find it a little bit different. It's Yes, there's the, the scare tactic of you know, the vinyl siding may melt and maybe mm -hmm. cause your wood chips to get on fire, which can cause a home fire, very serious, but here in Hawaii, uh, we used to have jealousy glass everywhere, mm -hmm. and and it was enough. We, if you were warm, you opened your jealousy glass, and there was nice uh, air temperature coming through. Mm -hmm. What's happening today is we're finding that it's hot, and I don't think people understand the heat. Uh, you know, urban, uh, the urban heat effect. Uh, urban, this yeah, is heat heat island heat effect. Heat island effect, yeah, and that yeah, heat yeah. island effect mm -hmm. is really causing problems. We've, uh, and again, for those at home, it's it's. Uh, a man-made 
uh, problem. It's uh, up in the, if we're up on Kaneohe, uh, just outside going North Shore, maybe it's not as big of an effect because there's less buildings. But all the buildings that we're seeing along El Moana and Nimitz, uh, they're big, beautiful glass structures. Mm -hmm. And to make them energy efficient and in compliance with what we're calling code, we're putting reflective glass on. Well, that sun's energy is not just going to go away when it sees it. It may be protective to the interior, but it is going to reflect backwards, mm -hmm. and it's going to heat up our air, and it causes several problems. Okay, now, the ceramic coating, I understand, doesn't reflect the, I, for the audience, I, <coughs> IR is infrared, and that's the real heat that we really feel. Uh, the ceramic, apparently, something has to happen to that heat to not get inside. Uh, Mr. Newton taught us that uh, energy is neither created nor, nor destroyed, so something, it's there somewhere. Where, where does it go? So the way ceramics work differently, mm -hmm. and uh, when the ceramic films first came out, uh, we used to hear people say, but we can't have an absorption level above this percentage, and it was right around 50%. Mm -hmm. And the reason was is because it will cause thermal stress and break glass. Mm -hmm. And today there are still a lot of people uh, here on, in Hawaii that will claim ceramics will break glass. Uh, they've been around uh, on Hawaiian buildings, large projects since right around the turn of the century, yeah. about 2000, and they're not breaking glass. And the reason is is because those ceramic films, although they may only feel two mil to our hand, and they're about two millimeter thick, the problem, or the uh, good part is, is that of that two mil, each individual layer, and there's about six, seven different layers of, uh, of property in there working, some of it does reflect the solar energy back. If you happen to have dual pane glass and we're operating on the interior surface, some will re-radiate into that airspace and heat that airspace up. We're often asked if that has a tendency to break glass, but it doesn't heat it up enough. There is a layer that will be more absorptive. If you took a uh, IR gun and tried to measure the surface temperature of glass with film, it's going to read hotter. It mm -hmm. will definitely be warmer, and that's our offensive line in football. It is holding up the heat at the glass. The difference is that when metals heat up and they tend to move, they can cause that thermal stress. A mm -hmm. lot of times we'll see old metal window films with very long fingers on the glass, and that's because over time that elasticity as the glass heats up and moves, Mm -hmm. And again, on low E glass, it's more of a concavity. It's where it's bending inward or outward, and the film cannot, or the window tint can no longer stretch back and forth. Mm -hmm. The ceramics are intended to hold the heat and dissipate the energy in, again, what's called a rapid, if not immediate fashion. One mm -hmm. of the slides, which, if I'm ever invited back, mm -hmm. we'll have that slide there, was when they were developing the space shuttle tiles for NASA, mm -hmm. was a very big glowing. Uh, ceramic tile. And, and, and on, that, on that note, let's, let's hold it there because I remember it's 2200C. Uh, we do need to take a break. This is Code Green Hawaii Think Tech back in a moment. Hi, I'm Stan Energy Man and I want you to be here every Friday. Noon, thinktechhawaii.com. Watch the show. Be there. I pity the fool who ain't. Hi, I'm Tim Apicella. I'm the host for Moving Hawaii Forward, and the show is dedicated to transportation and traffic issues in Oahu. Um, we are all frustrated by sitting in our cars uh, in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, and this show is dedicated to talking to, with folks that not only we can define the problem, but we hopefully can come to the table with some solutions. So I invite you to join me every Tuesday at 12 noon, and let's move Hawaii forward. Hi. I'm Cheryl Crozier Garcia, the host of Working Together on Think Tech Hawaii. Join us every other Tuesday from 4 p.m. to 4.30 when we discuss the impact of change on employees, employers, and the economy. Good afternoon again, Howard Wig, Code Green Think Tech Hawaii. My esteemed guest today is a habitué of uh, Princeton University, and his knowledge shows that. Habitué, I said. Andrew Sabaros, President and CEO of Cornerstone Energy Solutions. We're talking about window film, but instead of just talking about window film, we're talking about space shuttle technology. And when that space shuttle comes back into the Earth's atmosphere, 
it gets hot. How hot is that, and how does that relate to ceramic technology, which relates to window film? Again, it will hit okay. over 2,000 degrees. and uh, Celsius. Again, Celsius. Yes. So 2,000 degrees. <clears throat> uh, so that heat buildup, mm -hmm. we have to keep the participants of this shuttle safe inside. Mm -hmm. So the heat has to absorb, but we want it to dissipate the energy away from. That doesn't always mean dissipating the uh, the temperature off of the tile, but can you touch it? And you actually can touch it. This is very similar to a brick home. If you own a brick home and you have a metal garage door on an mm -hmm. August day and the sun's beating right on the front of your house, feel free to touch your, your door. Mm -hmm. You can touch your door or, or your, uh, I'm sorry, the brick, touch the brick. And what's happened is the brick has absorbed the heat, but it has mm -hmm. dissipated mm -hmm. the energy away from the home. If you touch that garage door, or even sometimes a glass window. You'll mm -hmm, put your hand mm -hmm. on it and you will burn your fingers in your hand because it is absorbing and holding on to. Little story I like to tell, and I'm gonna, I love that I'm gonna get to say this here mm -hmm. for you. My daughter Madison and I will do something that's kind of fun. We will take a cookie sheet, metal cookie sheet to simulate your metal technologies, and you take a brick to simulate your ceramic technologies, mm -hmm. and we'll stick it in the oven. And put mm -hmm. it in the oven, 200, 300 degrees uh, for, uh, a little bit of time until the oven's nice and hot. And if you open up the oven after that time, you can put your hand in there and pick the brick up. Mm. Anybody that's ever done some baking around the holidays, if you look at a mm. cookie sheet that's been in the oven for 30 minutes to an hour, it no longer is flat. It's warbled. And that's mm -hmm. warbled because the metals would like to change. When metals heat up, they like to move and they change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ceramics don't have that ability. Ceramics, again, being more of a nitride type uh, uh, product versus an oxide. Yeah, and ju just to, <clears throat> we've been talking about metals moving around a bit, we should note that cold surfaces or cold elements are tightly packed and relatively stable, whereas hot elements expand and move all over the place, and the molecules move in very wild uh, fashions. They're Absolutely. dashing all over the place. And when that <clears throat> occurs inside of metals, the result is that the metals themselves are actually moving. Correct. Yeah. So our next topic is high definition clarity. Now you've got all these little beads. I admit it might be millions of beads in a window, but you can see out of that window pretty gosh darn clearly. What What's going on with that? How come you're not looking at a lot of little beads? I think we'll have to give a little bit of the credit to the fine folks at Mercedes-Benz. Uh, what happened is that this technology has been sandwiched between glass at the factory level, the OEM level, and to this day is still, um, as I believe the name came up in the uh, Heritage video at the beginning, uh, they're still utilizing this and they'll put it between. In a home or a business, your office, uh, the glass is not normally right to you. In your vehicle as you're driving, uh, your front windshield where you need the best clarity and to your side windows where it is almost inches away from your face mm -hmm. you need the best optical clarity mm -hmm. we are able to sputter these at an optical clarity that just does not occur with metals or dyes because it's more of a particle versus it being a coating uh, and again that is really one of the bigger differences between a tint mm -hmm. and a film these go on as in a true nano scale when they're applied to that substrate we feel that the substrate we utilize as well is probably making a very big difference in that technology. And j just for the audience's clarity, a nano, if I'm not mistaken, is one billionth of a meter? One billionth of a meter. So we're talking about some pretty gosh darn little <laughs> <laughs> particles. Very there. small particles. Yeah, and as yeah. we put it up there, it can be uh, controlled in any visible light transmission as well. Mm -hmm. So as it's <clears> being <throat> sputtered, we have the ability to change its visible light transmission or how clear or dark something is. It can be as dark as a five visible light transmission. One of the first applications in the state of Hawaii uh, was uh, a ceramic five project, uh, and it can go all the way as clear as an 85 visible light transmission mm -hmm. product. So with just about every gradient in between uh, roughly uh, by 10. And, and just to clarify there, you're sp talking about visible light transmittance, and that measures the amount you you take your say you're inside and you're looking outside at a, at a landscape and if you did not have a window in front of you 
your visibility would be one or one hundred. But if you take a clear, quote unquote, pane of single pane glass and look through that, you think it's totally clear, but in fact it's more like 0.87. You're just getting 13% of the visibility is being blocked. And you're talking about the nanotechnology getting up as high as a visible light transmittance as 0.85, Correct. which you, the human eye absolutely cannot perceive any difference at, at that level. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up as well. <coughs> there are times where we've actually placed samples on glass and asked people to locate where the sample is. And in the middle of a 60 by 65 inch piece of glass, we'll stick an eight inch by 11 inch piece of uh, material on the glass mm -hmm. and once it's on there and cured it's very difficult to even see where the lines around it are which makes for seeming larger windows than 72 inches uh, makes it very nice. Mm -hmm. Here in Hawaii I, I think that the visible we're getting into a different world here with daylighting. I'm not a huge fan of daylighting glass uh, and as a US GBC chairman and somebody who has gone uh, globally to speak for that organization on green pro projects. There's a lot of glass that is coming out in this world today and it's very clear. Whenever I see uh, certain ones come out, I absolutely look and I say, I know we're going to find blinds. Uh, a good mm. example would be the building I sent a picture of to you today. Mm -hmm. Many people here uh, on the islands are familiar with uh, the NOAA facility on Ford Island. Mm -hmm. That was built with the most state-of-the-art uh, low-E glass uh, with a, uh, a 60 visible light transmission. So very clear daylighting. The problem is that we don't always realize and recognize that 44% of heat is delivered through daylight. Mm -hmm. And if it's delivered through daylight, the fine engineers over at the NOAA facility said, I'm so glad you came because the heat is killing us in this building. It's very hot as the light passes through because as light passes through, the heat comes through. Mm -hmm. Now, that didn't happen in the past. Now, if it was clear, uncoated, it would be even hotter. So yeah, I'll be very clear, fair yeah. to the technology. The problem is, is, again, that you're reflecting heat away from the building. So the building outside it is warmer. And inside, if you're trapping the long wave inside the building mm -hmm. and not giving it a place, that glass is allowing heat in, but not allowing the transfer back out for that to escape. Most buildings that I see with this are going to coating their entire building with blinds. And that comes at mm -hmm. a very great cost, and it takes away from the daylighting. Mm -hmm. We have a local high school that actually, one of our partners is going to be filming. They put in brand new, very energy efficient, low E glass, and it's coated with construction paper. And I can share with you where that school is, and actually mm -hmm. if you would like to see the mm -hmm. installation next week, I invite you to come by. Uh, the teacher, very excited because Carnegie Mellon Daylighting Report has taught us several things, including wherever positive daylight occurs, very good things happen. So what happens with positive daylight is students have better retention level, mm -hmm. better test scores, and it's just a more positive environment conducive to learning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So with construction paper up 24-7, it's mm -hmm. not conducive to learning. In the school world where, uh, where we spend quite a bit of our time in, in schools, hospitals, hotels, things of that nature, uh, two-way communication is also very important. It is now, uh, you know, in very great tech reports from the glass manufacturers themselves, they're saying that low-E coatings will block cell phone and, more importantly, our first responder signals. Our police, our fire, and our EMS, their signals mm -hmm. are being blocked at the glass. The cell phone tower could be directly outside the building. Mm -hmm. But once the doors close, you've lost your signal. And we've all experienced walking into a building before where we have absolutely no cell phone reception. And mm -hmm. usually the glass is to blame uh, for and, that. And specifically the metal in, in the glass. The metal in the glass, mm -hmm. because this didn't happen before. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the things that's become really important to me uh, as I've spent the last several years here in Hawaii is that I'm watching a lot of new construction and I won't pick on buildings specifically by name. Uh, if anybody's ever seen me speak before, you've definitely heard me mention the buildings and I've spoke for the AIA. Uh, there is going to be a reflectivity requirement in the Kakaka Park mm -hmm. area, which I'm so happy because it came as a direct result of what uh, mm -hmm. business partner Rich Goldberg and I have 
uh, done. We've had a, a passion to save the glass from going into landfills. Mm -hmm. We've seen Lowy glass on no less, I could probably name off the top of my head, 15 buildings that are under five years old. Mm -hmm. And that Lowy glass, in the one report I had sent you this morning, uh, the one uh, point it makes very loud and clear, once Lowy glass starts to corrode, there mm. is the replacement is the only alternative, mm. glass replacement. We don't always have the money to do that, especially in our state buildings. And I can mm -hmm. I could spend hours talking about why Lowy glass corrodes. It's a great product. And I've gone head to head with some of the finest folks at uh, the biggest glass manufacturers. At the end of the day, their own tech reports say within 75 miles of a coastline, and mm -hmm. when you start to bend yeah, you stuff your, into a concavity, salt corrosion, yeah. salt water corrosion mm -hmm. is, is here. And yeah. the only way we can beat that is to go to a more inert type material. Well, getting, getting back to schools, this is one of my particular passions. I happen to be a, I have met Lisa Heshong, who started the performance and view studies in California probably 25 years ago. And what she found was they would take uh, a teacher and a bunch of kids who had very, very poor views out of their classrooms, like maybe it was totally enclosed or there it was uh, curtained or whatever, and they measured the performance of these kids and then take the same teacher, the same kids, and put them into classrooms with great views of the outdoors and this is what you're referring to, test scores went up by 20%. And a lot of these, uh, those of us who know public schools, the portable classrooms, quote unquote, uh, well, we don't, we, that we could go on and on and on about that, but we have unfortunately reached the limits of our time. Thank you, Andrew Sabaros, president and CEO of Cornerstone Energy Solutions for talking about high, high performance glass, keeping the heat out, keeping the visibility good. Thank you very much. Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. See you next time.